Hello my friends! Today we are going to paint a Death Cut Plague Marine. I received a lot of requests for this one. Well, here it is my friends. I will try to show you as best as I can my process. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see another Death Cut model in a future video. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so that you know when new videos are coming. Also, there is a Patreon page if you would like to support the channel. With that being said, let's jump to the video. The paints that I'm going to use are Ink by Darkness, Death Cut Green, Usam Bone, and White. To begin with, I'm going to cover all over the surface with Ink by Darkness through my airbrush. This is going to be our shadow on the model. Next, I'm going to paint the base color with Death Cut Green. Carefully paint the upper surfaces of the model to create a smooth transition between the shadows and the base color. The first highlight will be a mix of 50% Death Cut Green and 50% Usapti Bone. I will use the airbrush again, but this time I am only painting on select areas of the model. For the final highlight I'm going to use the previous mix with some drops of white and I will concentrate at the very top patch of the model. Before the weathering process, it is important to give a coat of varnish to the model. I'm going to use an acrylic base satin varnish, a mix of one part thinner and one part varnish it will work perfectly to get smooth result on the model. Spraying the varnish with the airbrush from at least 10 cm distance avoiding to stay over one place. You should move left and right up and down. Filters. To create the filter, I am using green oil and I will add 90% thinner. A filter is a thin layer of paint that has been diluted to about 1 part paint to 10 parts thinner. The filter can change the tone of the base color. Filters are fairly transparent and subtle and they need to be applied uniformly over the whole surface. As you can see, I am applying filter in a uniform way trying to avoid it accumulating in the gaps. Because of this, it is important to wipe the paint on a kitchen paper or a toilet paper or whatever you like. Just avoid too much paint on your brush, okay? Here you can see the difference before and after 3 coats of filter. After the filters are completely dry, let's add some shading with oils. I'm going to use a blue-black oil paint. This paint will give us a very nice dark blue shadow. I will paint in areas that I want to create more shadows. As you can see, I am painting thin line and then with small brush and without thinner, I start to fade out the dark color. Of 
course, any mistakes can be fixed with thinner. If your paint was too much or the shade was not like you wanted to, you can simply clean the surface with thinner and then try again. Chipping. Chipping is a process that I like to use often on my models, especially on vehicles. I want to create a horn effect on the Plague Marines armor. The most usual way to create the chipping effect is by using a sponge or a small size brush. Today I want to use only my brush. With the sponge the effect is more random. From the other hand the brush offers greater control of the chipping effect. To create the effect, I am using my last highlight mix, but with more white in it. I start to paint small dots, scratches, to create the worn effect. Here you can see how it looks after the first step of chipping. Next step is to paint the dark chipping effect. I am using a mix of Vallejo Halo Red and Black. The point here is to paint the darker chips inside the existing lighter ones. With that way we achieve a more 3D dimensional effect. It is a slow process that requires patience and precision, but with practice everything can be possible. After the chipping has been completed, it's time for some rust effects. For this step, I'm going to use enamel paints, a light rust wash and rust streaking effects. With a small brush, I'm adding some rust tones to the chipped areas with the light rust wash. Then, with an enamel thinner, gently tapping around its rust spot to remove some of the rust wash and make the effect more subtle. To 
great rust tricks and will apply vertical strokes on the model with a fine brush. Once the paint has dried, I will take a flat brush moistened with enamel thinner and with downwards movement I will soften the stick effect. With the streaking effect complete, let's continue with another cool effect. Splatter or speckling technique. It is a technique that allows us to create lots and lots of tiny speckles on the model. With the help of a toothpick, I will remove some of the paint on the paper. After that, I am starting to create the effect on the model, slowly and carefully because I don't want to overdo it. And that is all for today my friends, in the next video we're going to paint all the other parts of the model. Thank you very much for watching, I hope that you found this video useful and if you enjoyed it hit the like button. Huge thanks to my awesome Patreon supporters and see you in the next one, bye!